WT slaying. Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. How y'all doing today? So we're going to talk about Africa. We're going to talk about the black Jews, um, you know, which we are. Um, I don't I don't think anybody can uh, <laughs> really defeat all the evidence anymore. I mean, you know, we the Israelites. We're the true Israelites. Ain't no doubt about it. No matter what anybody says. I mean, I mean, they can't prove otherwise. Even Ashkenaz and other people are saying that the Negro, the true Israelites. I mean, it's, it's, all, it, it, it's all over the place. Now, some of the stuff I'm going to talk about today, you have to use your cabeza. You have to use your head. You have to use your thinking cap. We have to move beyond things like we're not called Jews, right? The Europeans called us Jews. There was no J until 500 years ago. We got to move beyond that type of stuff, right? That is simplistic. It is simplistic. Understand, most of the information out there is going to be from either Arabs or Europeans. Some of them call us Yehudi, some don't. Some call us Yao, some don't. Some call us Yaori, some don't. And they'll put them together and call you Israelites. And that's why I'm saying, like, even, you know, when you try to dig out the lies, you have to put the pieces together. You're never going to dig out the lies without looking for the inconsistencies in their history and in their maps and in their documents. And seeing the ones who weren't a part of the conspiracy look like before 1850, all the books before 1850, tell the truth about the Jews. Everybody knew the Jews were black. So why am I saying this? Because some of the stuff I'm going to talk about is somewhat theoretical, but there's circumstantial evidence. And that's why I'm saying you have to put on your thinking cap. So we're going to watch a little bit of a video first, and then we're going to talk about this as we go on. This is a video about the black Moroccan Jews. Some of you may have seen it already. It has a silence in the beginning. Let me skip up here. So this is a picture of black Moroccan Jews. Here I stand in the Mila, the Jewish quarters of Medina of Esruia, formerly known as Magador. In the 18th century, before and even to a time period after, this portion of the fortified city was home to a striving Islamic community. Today, as you see, it's only just a thing of the past. Although people live here, all of whom are Muslim, 
the only remembrance, a reminder, are the derelict buildings and heaps of rubble. Who were the Jews of the Medina in Magador, who according to history were great tradesmen and were favoured and respected by some of the greatest sultans of the past, including Muhammad bin Abdullah, the grandson of the famous black sultan, Musli Ismail Ibn Sharif. The answer to the identity of the Jews who once lived here during the period of the great sultans isn't found thousands of miles away in what is known as the modern state of Israel, where mass migration from Morocco has taken place, but right here in the Medina walls. Here lies the true identity of the Israelite community that once lived here in the ancient synagogue that has been restructured and rebuilt. Here lies the truth that many seek after. Inside this restored synagogue, there are pictures everywhere. Historical evidence is right before my eyes. This extraordinary building has much to be desired. Here inside the synagogue, known as the synagogue of Hamim Binto, we find some very interesting pictures of the Jews of Magadur. Upon closer examination of the four pictures, it is clear to see that the Moroccan Jews of the past were highly melanated beings. Here we see black Jews walking through the Medina. Below we see these same dark-skinned Israelites at the Bab El Masa in Magador, which was built in 1769 during the reign of Mohammed ben Abdullah as part of the reconstruction of the fortification of the city. As you can see, there is an engraved inscription above the arch as to when and who constructed this forty gate. In this recent picture of the same door, a close and more detailed inscription can be seen. This picture isn't quite as clear. However, the fourth picture clearly depicts these ancient Israelites who lived in the Medina as Mennonated people. Wanting to understand more about the pictures, I asked the guardian, who was unwilling to go on camera, to inform me of what these pictures represent. These were his words. Is Muslim, is Muslim, is Jewish together. Muslim, Jewish together. I was not at all surprised by the guardian's statement. From a Quranic point of view, the term Muslim, meaning one who submits, predates Muhammad. So here we're talking about the black Moroccan Jews. It's, it's interesting that a lot of people don't want to talk about the black Moroccan Jews. <laughs> you know, there's something <laughs> that I want to share, but I don't want to share. I really don't want to get into it too much. But... There's 19%, I'm gonna just leave it like this. There's 19%, I think it's 19 5 or 19.6 percent. And you know, I don't I, I don't believe. Well, let me move on because I don't even want to go there. So let's continue. So so we had the Moroccan Jews who were there. Who were these people? Who were these people, right? Because understand, like the you know the little short clip I did yesterday, dealing with the Yap group, the Black Moroccan Jews would defeat their whole theory. But you know, people like them, when you give them information, they ignore it anyway because they they have a camp science. Moroccan Jews, the black Moroccan Jews destroys their whole theory. Believe me. 
especially what they say about us. But I digress. So who were these black Moroccan Jews? Morocco, black Moroccan Jews. Who are they? Okay, so if we go through history, we're going to look at some stuff and we're going to see who these black Moroccan Jews were more than likely. All right, Yoruba, son of Ephraim, Yoruba, son of Ephraim. As stated in my books regarding the Ebos, the father of the Yoruba people, Odudawa traveled with Gad's son, Eri Areli and Arodi from North Africa, likely Egypt, and settled in what today is known as Nigeria. This will coincide with Yoruba oral history that they believe to come from outside of West Africa. And thus, it would be no surprise that we might find Israelite Hebrews and Jews among the Aruba. Let me ask you a question, family, before I uh, continue on. Do I sound okay? If I sound okay, give me a one. If I sound sort of muted, give me a two. Let me know if I sound okay. All right. So Odua was said to be a descendant of Ham through Nimrod, also called Lamarudu. This, according to Yoruba Christian Samuel Johnson in 1880, Sultan Bello Caliph of Sokoto, was quoted in 1820 by Hugh Clapperton to have said that the Yoruba people were descendants of a Canaanite tribe. And Esso Abiyaku, a Nigerian historian, claimed the Yorubas to originate from the Sudan, or what was known as Kush. However, some say Yoruba is a corruption of the name Jacob, or in Hebrew, Yaakob. Others assert that Yoruba is from Yorubal, people of against Baal. But the current Yoruba Jewish population who claim to come from the Israeli tribe of Ephraim, so they claim to come from Ephraim, were said to have been driven to Yoruba land from Morocco. Where? From Morocco. Who? Black Jews, Yoruba by Muslims and eventually mingled with Yoruba people. These black Jews in Southern Nigeria are called the Imo Yokwain, or strange people by the native Africans. But these black Jews call themselves Benai Ephraim, sons of Ephraim. These Jews who claim that their ancestors came from Morocco is supported by their language, which appears to be a mixture of Maghri Maghrabi Arabic and local Negro speech. Thus, Abu, father, has become Yaba from the Hebrew word Abba, and Um, mother, and Em from the Hebrew Emma. Nevertheless, most of their language is similar to the Yorubas around them. So these black Moroccan Jews were Yoruba. These Yoruba, sons of Ephraim, observe certain Jewish customs among which are the great holy days, naming of children on the eighth day in almost every way. These black Jews are like the Yorubas and are hardly distinguishable from them except for some outstanding Hebrew observances. But there is doubt whether any from this group exists today among the Yoruba. There's a clan among the Yoruba people called Iju, which is believed to be a corruption of the word Hebrew or Jew. They are looked down upon by the rest of the Yoruba for displaying evil like character traits one of which is business prowess, there is even a town in Yoruba land called Iju Igbo. Much if the Iju people resent and deny this connection with them and the Igbo. So they are related, the, the Yoruba are related to who? The Igbo. The black Jews in Morocco is more than likely Yoruba, because tradition says that the Yoruba came from Morocco and that they were black Jews. So that's the tradition. What is the other thing we know about the Yoruba? They are the Emo Yoquain, the strange people. That's why they were called Jews, black people, right? They thought we were strange. We were the outcasts. All right. What else we know about the Yoruba? We know that the Yoruba are from the tribe of Ephraim. 
They're from the tribe of Ephraim. Now, as it says here that when they came from Morocco, they, were a, they joined a group of people who are already in Yoruba land. So you got the Igbo Yoruba, you got the Iju, right? And you got other tribes out there who are called Yoruba. Yoruba is an encompassing term. But the sons of Ephraim or the sons of Ephraim, understand, understand this. Everything ties back to black Jews. And we're going to see why it's important that we look at some of these words because we we ask ourselves, where do some of these words come from? And the Gentiles will make stuff up and, you know, they'll give us explanations that don't line up with history. So let's continue. Now, I'm going to make a point here. as we go on. So this is from the Jewish Virtual Library. It says the Ofran, the provincial capital of the center Sud region, north central Morocco, is situated in the middle Atlas Mountains. It is Morocco's winter and summer premier resort area. According to Judeo-African tradition, Ofran is regarded as the first site of Jewish settlement in Morocco. Many legends have been created about the ancient community of Ophran, whose first members are said to have arrived from the land of Israel, or Eretz, before the destruction of the first temple in Jerusalem. A Jewish kingdom was set up there, which was governed by the Afriat family. Now, let's stop right here. So we know there were Jews in Morocco. We know that the, uh, they were in a community in Morocco called Ophran. They left during the time of the destruction of the first temple. All right, what else do we know? We know that the Jewish kingdom was set up and governed by a family called Afriat. Why is this important? Well, let me continue reading and I'm going to show you. Okay, then named Ephrati. Why is the name Afriat and Ephrati important? See, you got to start putting the pieces together. The Jews of this kingdom are said to have belonged to the tribe of Ephraim. So we know they belong to the tribe of Ephraim, just like Yoruba said, they belong to the tribe of Ephraim. Yoruba said they come from Morocco, right? And I'm using Yoruba as an encompassing term, okay? The Jews of this kingdom are said to have belonged to the tribe of Ephraim, one of the lost 10 tribes of Israel, indeed in the modern era of the Afriat family administered the affairs of the community of Ophran and of all the communities of the region. So you have a family called Afriat, then named Ephrati. Keep that in your mind, Ephrati. Okay, and Afriat. Now, I'm going to make the distinction and comparison right now, and I'm going to build the proof, at least how I see it, as we go on. I'm going to make the case, whether or not you agree with me or not, I'm going to make the case that the Africa family is why the continent is called Africa. I'm going to make the case that the Afrat family is the reason why Africa got its name. And remember, the Africa family is called Ifrati. All right, keep that in mind because I'm going to come back to it. All right. So the Jewish cemetery of Ophran is very old, and there are many tombstone inscriptions dating from the Middle Ages. Local tradition ascribes some of them to the first century BCE pilgrimages were made from every part of Morocco to this cemetery, which contains the remains of revered rabbis and martyrs. According to local tradition, there was a terrible persecution following the destruction of the community by the Byzantine Christians. Other persecutions have been historically proven. The last of which took place in 1792 when the pretender Bohalas, who sought to be proclaimed Sultan, arrived in Ophran. He seized 50 Jewish notables and gave them an alternative of converting to Islam or death by fire. Under the guidance of their leader, Judah Afriat, they jumped one after the other into the huge furnace, which had been lit for the occasion. 
Judah Afriat remained to the end in order to encourage those who faltered. The remains of those martyrs known as Nisraphim, burnt ones, were piously gathered and interred in the cemetery of Ophron. The account of their martyrdom was copied on parchment and circulated throughout the country. A popular etymology explains the name Ophron as a combination of Efer, the ashes of, and the letter Nun, equal 50. The descendants were greatly esteemed, and to the present day, they commemorate the anniversary of the event by refraining from lighting fires in their homes. The community of Ophran was prominent and wealthy, and a large part of the Trans-Sahara trade passed through its hands. After 1792, its members dispersed. They played an important role in the community of Mogador, especially the members of the Afriat family, who I claim is why Africa probably got his name, and I'm, I'm going to show you why. And during the 19th century, they established a commercial house in London. For more than 50 years, the Afriat house was the most important family in Anglo-Moroccan trade. The community of the Ofran was reorganized in the 19th century by a few Jewish families of the region. The community never regained its former prosperity, but its members nevertheless lived in security until 1955, when they all immigrated to Israel. Now, what happened in Europe, I can't say, but understand this. When you look at history, there was a lot of black Jews all throughout Europe. We, we talked about that. OK, black Jews were in Germany. Black Jews were in London. Black Jews were in in uh, Spain and Portugal. Black Jews were in London. Uh, they were everywhere. So when they talk about the Afriat family, from Morocco, who are Jews, same place that the Yoruba Jews are from, which is Morocco, according to their history and traditions, right? We can make the connection and based upon the pictures we saw that there were black Jews in Morocco in the early 1800s, that those Jews who were there were black Jews. Now, if we agree that the Jews who were there were black Jews, why do I think the Afriat is where we get the, the name Africa from? I believe that Africa, and, and look, I'm not a linguist, right? But I know that a lot of these words tie back together. My case is that Africa is probably, you know, and like I said, I'm not a linguist, probably means the land of Ephraim. Why do I say that? Well, let's look and see why I believe that the land of Africa is based upon the Ephrat family. And remember, let me go back up before we move on. The Ephrat family was also called Ephrati. Why is that important? And remember, these black Jews were from the tribe of Ephraim, what we see in the Bible, Ephraim. Why is this important? Let's continue. All right. All right, so I'm gonna go share this screen. Okay, and we're going to go to Genesis 41.52. So this is Genesis 41.52. And the name of the second called he Ephraim. Why is this important? So we know in Morocco, there was the black Jews who lived there who were called Ephrati or Afrati or Ephrati, right? We know that they were supposed to be from the tribe of Ephraim. We know that the tribe of Yoruba, some of the people who are members of Yoruba, were black Jews, right? From Morocco, okay, according to their history, right? And they were also what? Imoyokwain, the strange people who are of the tribe of Ephraim. All right, that's according to their history. Now, let's look at the scriptures and let's go to Strong's. 
Now, according to Strong's, the name for Ephraim is Ephraim, but it's pronounced Ephra. Ephraim. All right. So we got another linguistic connection here, right? Ephra. Ephraim. Now, I made the case, and I'm making the case, that Africa uh, is derived from the Afrit family, which is derived from the word Ifrit, right? From the root word Ephra. Why? Because they belong to the tribe of Ephraim. That's what they say, right? So Yim, yim or Im usually denotes plurality, right, in Hebrew, right? So here's a connection with the word Ephra, or Afrit. I'm going to make the case, and you don't have to agree with it, that Africa is named after the tribe of Ephraim. All right, so we got the connection linguistically that Ephra is tied to the tribe of Ephraim. All right, so let's continue. This is, you all heard this before many times, the earth and its inhabitants, recluse, Elise recluse. East of the Great Popo begins the Dahomey territory, guarded by the important town of Glayway, known to Europeans by the various names of Fida, Wida, Wida. The old writers called it Judah, and its inhabitants were said to be Jews, while the neighboring river Alala, whose real name was Ephra. Now, what did we just learn right now? We just learned that the Yoruba came from Morocco. The Yoruba were black Jews. That there was a family there called Afrit or Efrat. We see here that there's a river called Efra. Thank you for the gift. And it became known as the Euphrates. So, what did this river become known as? So, Efra, oops. So, Efra, Efra ties back to Ephra in the Bible, Ephraim, which is Ephraim, which ties back to the Afrat family in Morocco, which belong, the Jews who were in Morocco, which are the Yoruba, ties back to the tribe of Ephraim. So we got the river named after the tribe of Ephraim. I hope y'all following along with me. We have a river named after the tribe of Ephraim. We saw that in the strong, it was called Ephraim. So we have a river named after the tribe of Ephraim and it became known as the Euphrates. So if it became known as the Euphrates and, and, and that Euphrates name is really a Greek transliteration, more than likely it's called Ephrates. Ephra. It used to be called Ephra. It became known as the Ephrates or the Euphrates. All right, hope y'all following along with me. I'm going to make the case, and I don't have a hard bunch of proof because I've been researching it, but I believe that this is the true river Euphrates. Why do I say that? Okay, so we know that Ephra it used to be a Lala river which is in the territory of Dahomey. We know where Dahomey is in Africa, in the west part of Africa, right? We know where Benin is, Benin and Dahomey. We know that the inhabitants were said to be Jews. We know that Ephra means Ephraim. Therefore, Euphrates, which is a Greek transliteration, more than likely, I'm not, I'm not a linguist, more than likely means Ephrates the Ephraim River. All right, so, and, and so Europeans calls it Euphrates. So y'all heard of the rest of all of that. I, I'm not going to go through the rest of that. So I'm going to share something else. So this is Elise Recluse, but it's in its French version. Okay. So here we see that, you know, it's Ephra, as we said, right? Now, 
and I'm going to show you this, <laughs> is Euphrates, Poles, and Rutis. Now, understand right here, I wanted to show you this first because the translation we saw left the part out. The translation we, we was just looking at, looking at said it was called Ephra, and it was called Euphrates, or known as Euphrates. Why, why am I showing this to you? Because I want to show you something. Now, some translations, I've seen some translations that leave the part in that was taken out. But here's a translation of part of it, right? Popo des Europeans, right? We know all of that. Its inhabitants were said to be Jews, right? All that stuff. Ephra, uh, Euphrates, Poles, Urute. So it said the Grand Popo of the Europeans, which its inhabitants themselves called, we got the rest of that, whose real name is Ephra, had become the Euphrates for the scholars. It became the Euphrates for the scholars. So if scholars were call, calling, calling it, Euphrates, it used to be called Ephra, the Alala River. It's in the territory of Dahomey, right? Which is near Nigeria. I believe, and I don't have 100% proof for it, but this, you know, just follow along with me, just stick to it. I believe that the Euphrates, the real Euphrates, because the scholars are the ones who called it Euphrates. They didn't just make it up themselves. The scholars called it Euphrates. If the scholars called this Euphrates, why? That's the question you have to ask yourself. So where is the real Euphrates? Is it here in Dahomey territory? Now, I believe that Euphrates is the Niger River. I believe that because Elise Recluse gives us an area to look at, right? He tells us that it's in Dahomey territory which is the territory of the Benin, and Benin territory. So we know in the scriptures, and, and, you know, like I say, eat the meat, spit out the bones. Uh, in the homey territory is the Niger River. Now, if we believe, as, as I do, I believe that it's dealing with the Niger River. Thank you for the gift. Brother Todd. So I believe we're dealing with the Niger River. So if that's the case, and it's in the homey territory, according to Elise Recluse, right? What else does that tell us? So what does that tell us about the real Euphrates River? Is, is the area over there in Turkey, down into the Middle East, the real Euphrates? I'm going to tell you what I think is happening. So we're we going to get there. But there's a lot of deception that has gone on. It's just my opinion. You know, I'm not saying I'm 100. I'm just telling you what I see. All right. So Genesis 15, 18, on that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram and said to your descendants, I give this land from the Wadi of Egypt to the great river Euphrates. If it is the Niger River, as I am starting to believe. Then. What about the territory that really belongs to Israel? Is it the Middle East? Is it the Middle East? So it says from the great river, right? From the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. So the river Euphrates was called the great river. So the question is, And you know where I'm leaning already. The question is, is this the real Euphrates River? This is the one that runs in Turkey that goes down into what we call the Middle East. I say BS. I say BS. This is a fake Euphrates. Now, I know some of you scholars out there are going to come back to me and ask me about Revelation 16. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. All right. So 
We're going to look at another document. I just find it interesting. I like to do my investigative work. All right, so this is MDW Jeffries, uh, Johannesburg. I ain't going to even try to pronounce that. Origins of the word Niger. While it is clear that there should be some common denominator for the names of an African territory that appear to derive from a common root, it does not appear possible to find this common denominator. Thus, Nagrisha is defined according to the Century Dictionary of 1994 as a region in the Central Africa nearly equivalent to Sudan and the home of the most pronounced types of the Negro race. In Ogilvy's Africa, a map shows a region called Nigratirium, south of the Sahara, to stretch from the Atlantic to the Nile. So that one suspects that Negritia is but a Latinizing of the Arabic word Sudan, which means the land of the blacks. Ptolemy makes no mention of Negritia, but his discourse on the rivers of Africa may throw light on the origin of the word Niger. Okay, so this is the interesting part. Westwards from the Nile, he, Ptolemy, describes the vast range of Libya interior watered by the great rivers Gur and Niger. It, was get, it, it has been generally understood that this tract comprised the modern Negritia, that the Niger was the great river. So what we saw in the scriptures from the great river Euphrates, from the Nile or from the Wadi of Egypt to the great river Euphrates, is that not what we saw in the scriptures? So here it says that the Niger was the great river, so well known in Europe. So it, the Niger was what? Well known in Europe, right? The Europeans called Ephra or the river Ephra or formerly known as Alala, the Euphrates River. The European scholars did. So Niger was the great river so well known in Europe under, the, under this name, though it is not designated so in any part of Africa, and that the Gur is the river of Borneo. We may add that the name Gur is, is native in this part of Africa and is applied to the river of Segilamessa. So a lot of times, you know, they'll take a, a word and they'll, they'll, you know, as we see, they, they change it up a lot of times. They you know, re, they, they, they are retranslated, you know, into the Greek version, like Euphrates from Ephra to Euphrates or Ephrates, right? The Bible tells us that the great river, Euphrates here, they call Niger the great river. I believe it's no coincidence, right? And so what we're looking at here, in my opinion, all of this is my opinion. I'm just doing the research. These people been lying like a, like like the devil, right? They they they, they still killed and destroyed. They lie just like they fought the devil. They ain't no good. But anyway, so now the Nile River, what we call a Nile River, and, and don't follow this because this is really just the driving path to get there. But from the Nile to the Niger River is this territory. So if we go like from here, right? all the way across here, right, of Sub-Sahara. All of this, all of this is Israel territory. This is Israel. I showed you that before. All the way into South Africa, all of this is Israel. All the way to the Great River Euphrates, all the way over here, right, even in Ethiopia, because the Nile goes through Ethiopia, right? So I believe that's the land that God gave us, right, from the Nile to the Great River Euphrates, Thank you for the gift. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Not this fake Euphrates here in the Middle East. Not this fake Euphrates. Now, I'm going to show you something later on, but I'll come back to this and we're going to have a little discussion about this uh, river here. So the Great Popo or the Grand Popo is the area 
that Elise Recluse was talking about. Now they say the term Grand Popo is a European exonym for the ancient town and kingdom of Hulagan, Great Hula. Now, you see they changed the names up on us, right? The older words, the older names were Weda, Judah, or Judah, and it, you know, his heavens were said to be Jews. We know all that. So they renamed them here. Everything to misdirect us from the land of Israel. The land of Israel is where the people were. Jerusalem is a different story. Jerusalem was in the highlands of Ethiopia, I believe. Okay. So this is the area in Benin, right? That Elise Recluse called the Great Popo in the ter territory of the Dahomey territory, right? Which was near a river called Alala, which was called Ephra, which was called Euphrates, which I believe ties to the Niger River. So this is the Benin Togo area. which used to be the territory of the Dahomey kingdom. The kingdom of Dahomey was a West African kingdom located within the present day Benin that existed from approximately 1600 until 1904. Dahomey developed on the Abome Plateau amongst the Fon people in the early 17th century and became a regional power in the 18th century by conquering key cities on the Atlantic coast. So remember, Elise Ray Clue said this is the area which is where the river was called Alala, which was called Ephra, which was called the Euphrates. We saw that there's a connection to Euphrates and Ephra, and there's a connection between Ephra and the word or the name Ephraim, which is why I believe that Africa got its name. I believe Africa comes from the word Ephrati, the Ephrati family, or Ephrati, where we get Ephra, where we get Euphrates was named after, which was tied to a people who lived in Morocco who came down to live in Yoruba land. So this is the Niger River here, right? This is the Benin Togo area, which includes Nigeria, right? Where Yoruba live, which is the land I believe that the Most High gave to us from the Niger River to the Nile. This region includes the high forest zone between the Sanaga and the Niger. Right up in here. So as I stated, we have a people who lived in Ofran in Morocco. They belonged to the tribe of Ephraim. There was a family in Ofran called the Afrati, A-F-R-I-A-T, who were also called Ephrati. And Ephra is what a river was called. And that river was also associated with Ephraim or Euphrates, Ephrates. See, to me, they knew all of this stuff, right? So they tell you that Africa was named after Leo Africanus, but really Leo Africanus was named after Africa because he went in there conquering the north, northern part of Africa. I mean, they know the name of every other words. They know the etymology of every other word, but they can't tell you where the word or the name Africa comes from. They know. But if they were to admit 
that all of this ties back to the tribe of Ephraim, and Ephraim lived in Africa, which was named after Afriat, which was named after Ephrati, which was named after the tribe of Ephraim, which was named which had a, a river Euphrates named after. It, it blows the, 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 the roof off the lot. It blows the roof off the lot. So they're never going to give you the whole truth. We got to dig for the truth. And so I wanted to share with you all what I see. Eat the meat, spit out the bones. This is what I think. I don't think it's coincidence. So when we look at a lot of these things, we have to start piecing it together and go look at it. Go look at the information dealing with Ophrah and how the Yoruba was connected to them and being from there and being called black Jews. So, so we know who they were. As we saw in the video in the beginning, we saw that there were pictures of black Jews there, tribe of Ephraim. So go do the research, fam. Eat the meat, spit out the bones. Everybody not going to agree. Everybody don't have to agree. That's great. Isn't it good? We live in a free society. <laughs> not. Well, that's all I got for you, fam. I appreciate the support. I thank all of the uh, Super Chat supporters. Thank you all, Patreon and Cash App givers. Really appreciate it. Also, don't forget the Dry Bones Project. Right. And, and with the Dry Bones Project, you go over there, you support their channel, you watch their channel, you become subscribers on their channel. Right. You become patrons on their China channel. We didn't want to be in the middle of none of that. Money goes straight to them, not to us. When you're supporting the Dry Bones Project, we're just supporting each other. So don't forget, go, go support the Dry Bones Project. Peace and blessings, family. Look up and lift up your head, Israel, for your captivity is ending. Mm -hmm.